Good evening. I hope everybody's had a very blessed day. Uh, hopefully the rain has got gone out and nobody had any damage from the winds or uh, possibility of tornadoes that may have hit last night. And uh, so with that said, we're going to go on and get started in uh, uh, part 26 of God's plan for you. And, and this is very important because often we take the Word of God uh, not as serious as we need to. And this, you know, uh, as we've went through section after section, a few verses at a time, uh, everything has been leading up to this right here. So if you've got your Bible, turn to Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to look at verses 10 through uh, 12 tonight. And then next week, we will complete the last of uh, Ephesians. And But tonight's very important, as I've said. You know, we've went over the family, the husband, the wife, and uh, Jesus and the church, and our children, and our work, and all that. And, of course, uh, 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 with uh, that being said, <laughs> i get started before I... Um, at right now uh, says in verse 10 finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might uh, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil and uh, then verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That was last night. Now, like I said, my mind, I'm just uh, uh, <laughs> a little bit tired. Now, let's get with tonight. Forgive me, because uh, I knew that I was I was thinking about last night, but tonight we're looking at verses 13 through uh, 17. And uh, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, in other words, the complete armor of God, that you may be able to stand or be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. I think we can all agree that right now that uh, there, the wickedness is running rampant. Uh, and, and unless we put the complete or the whole armor of God on, we will not be able to stand against the wickedness, against what the Satan or the demonic spirits that will uh, attack us uh, spiritually, physically, mentally. And uh, so with the complete armor on, we will be able to stand. You know, Jesus said, uh, he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. In other words, he doesn't want us to fail. He wants us to overcome. Now, we're going to break down uh, each verse. Verse 14 has two parts. It says, Stand, therefore, having your loins girt with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Okay. The loins girth with truth is the place that covered uh, below your breastplate and down to your thighs. And uh, yet it also uh, refers to, to your emotions. And 
I'll give you the scripture, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. In other words, we've got to have our minds focused right. We walk by faith, not by feeling or emotions. We are not to let our emotions rule us, but we're to rule our emotions. Um, and with that, it's just like in St. John chapter 17, verse 17. Jesus said, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Just like any soldier that is ready, that's been trained and is ready for combat, they know that in the heat of the battle, they must positively, absolutely keep their emotions in check or they'll get killed and possibly cause more damage to the people around them. And we see that happen all the time. I mean, you let some, you be around somebody that's very emotional. They got their highs, they got their lows, and uh, one day they're up and one day they're down. One day they love everybody, and the next day they hate everybody. And when people start having the emotional roller coaster, then it causes them to not be able to put the armor of God, uh, God on. They're not can capture their thoughts. In other words, the thoughts is dictating their emotions. And uh, with that, it's just like we all have to remember that what happens to us affects people that are around us. And so you have to be able to be steadfast, be rooted and ground, grounded and established in the Word of God so that you're not just bouncing off everywhere. Your emotions aren't going ballistic, but you'll be able to control your thoughts, be able to uh, be even keeled, uh, you know, what, what I'm saying is that you're not like this, but you're you're just on a level. Uh, you're always the same. You don't let things get you bent out of shape. And so by having your loins girded with truth, and then when we put 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13 with it, then that takes a whole different perspective of uh, being battle ready. Then the second part is the breastplate of righteousness. And righteousness means right standing with God. Uh, you know, uh, and if righteousness is an attribute of what Jesus Christ did at the cross, and when we accept him as our Lord and Savior, then we come to the point that we understand that it's not my righteousness, because it's as filthy rags, can, according to the Word of God, but it's the righteousness of Jesus Christ that makes us acceptable to God the Father. And with that said, where does the breastplate go? It goes over your chest. And where is your your spirit man in, in your heart. So that's why when you got the breastplate of righteousness on, you are guarding your spirit man that's inside of you, the one that 
helps you, the one that strengthens you, the one that comforts you, the one that guides you, the one that teaches you. So it's so important as Paul's trying to get us to understand. You see, it's in the heart, it's in the spirit man that we build our faith in. And when we're walking in right standing with God, then your conscience will always be aware of your position with Jesus Christ. In other words, you'll know that, hey, Lord, you're right here with me. And uh, you'll guard that faith. You'll guard that heart. Then we'll go to verse 15. It says, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Well, now, where, where it says your feet shod is talking about um, being tied. In other words, uh, the word of God is tied to you. And, the, and also, it gives you the perspective of reconciliation, the good news of the gospel. Gospel is good news. When, if you go back in our series, back to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 and 17, you find that uh, because of Jesus Christ, uh, we can have that peace through the good news of the gospel. The gospel gives our feet stability and supports our lives. And that's why we should always be trying to bring peace and good news wherever we're at. I mean, we live in a world that's easy to find all types of negative. But it's time for Christians, as we put on the complete armor of God, the whole armor of God, that we learn how to walk in. You know, uh, uh, the psalmist said that the, the steps of a righteous man are appointed. In other words, God will guide our directions. Well, whatever direction we go in, are we bringing the good news of Jesus Christ with us? We ought to be. And if we do, then it's, it's just going to help us. It's going to help us to have that stability in life. It's going to help us to enjoy life, really, uh, because uh, we're just really walking in the presence of God uh, day in and day out. And there is a nothing greater than knowing that wherever you are, the Spirit of God is right there with you and will help you to share that good news. Then we get to verse 16. It says, above all, in other words, uh, more important, taking the shield of faith, wherein you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now, I'm going to break that down, and I did with the above all. In other words, more important, taking the shield of faith for with, or which with, you should be able to quench or extinguish all the fairy darts, flaming missiles of the wicked one. Now, back in that day and time, the Roman soldiers carried a uh, shield that was door shaped. Uh, a lot of times they were semi round to uh, deflect arrows or rocks or whatever's being thrown. But the shield itself was big enough that they could hide behind it completely. And, uh, and so, uh, that's like the shield of faith that God wants us to have is it's big enough to cover you completely and protect you from 
against anything the devil throws at you. And of course, he used the fiery dart, in which I referred to as a flaming missile. How many knows that uh, uh, a missile will usually do more damage than just hurt one person? And it's like uh, doing relationship studies. One of the things that uh, uh, James Miley taught is hurt people hurt people. And that's so true. That's just like if, you, if you're a Christian and you don't have the complete or the whole armor of God on and you start letting your emotions run wild, you start getting your feelings hurt, and the next thing you know, because you're hurt, you will hurt other people by what you say, by your actions, or whatever. But if you've got the whole complete armor of God on, then you'll have your mind in check, you're protecting the, the Holy Spirit, and you're able to stop the devil right in his tracks because he cannot get to you because you have that shield of faith. And, uh, and like I said, you know, Paul's, Paul has led us up to all this because he has got us to the point we need to understand the equipment that we have access to so that we can live and walk a victorious life. Uh, you see... Faith will handle Satan's largest weapon, and that's why faith is so important. Uh, you know, it's easy to talk about faith, but when you put it into action, it can be a different, a whole different scenario. Then we get to verse uh, seventeen. And it says, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now, the helmet of salvation, that helmet covers your head. And what happens in your head? Your head is where you think, you process. You make decisions on what you're going to do, how you're going to act. Uh, and, and so, uh, you know, that goes down. It's sort of like your soul because it you let it lead you. See, that's why a lot of times if we would listen to our heart instead of our head, we would be a, way, a, a whole lot better off. But more often than not, we let our head guide us instead of the heart where our spirit man is. Faith in the heart is your spirit man. Hope in your head, that's your soul. And the important thing is, is to never give up hope. As it says in uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, Now, faith is. Now, faith is. Not tomorrow. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So when you look at that, you got faith in your heart. And it's it is trying to motivate your soul, your mind, your intellect to grasp the power and the potential that God has given us. And once you start processing that, once we start thinking like Jesus would think, and you know, like the uh, book. WWJD, what would Jesus do? Well, Jesus said, I only do what the Father tells me to do. I only say what the Father tells me to say. I only do what he says. 
And if we had that type of mentality, if we got our mind focused on God, Isaiah says, he whose mind stays upon the Lord shall have perfect peace. You ever wonder why a lot of Christians don't have perfect peace? Is it because their soul, they not got the helmet of salvation on, and it's been bombarded? Instead, if they would get that helmet of salvation, what is salvation? When you look up the Hebrew meaning, or the Greek, it means your defense in time of need, or whatever you have need of at this very present time. So if you've got the helmet of salvation on, then you're getting the word of God in you, as I said a little bit ago, so that you can be rooted, grounded, and established and be able to stand because you know that no matter what the enemy does, you've got the complete armor of God on and you're not, the devil can't get to you. Your mind is focused your thoughts is focused. You're being led by the Spirit of God in the heart. And no longer are you like the wave being tossed to and fro that James talks about in chapter 1. But you're on the solid foundation, the rock of Gibraltar, the uh, Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone of, of the church. And you won't be just thinking one way and then another. No, your mind will come into the part where it'll be straight thinking. You'll capture those thoughts as we read in Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. And uh, so, you know, that's why we never give up hope. And we keep the faith in the heart. Let the word of God be the foundation of what you stand on. Once you know what you know, then you won't be changed during a difficult time. Uh, you know, uh, if you know something to be a fact, and you know that you know that you know, then you're not going to be persuaded or deceived into thinking something different. And as a child of God, if we would get the word of God into us that we know that we know that what Jesus said, that settles it, period, zip, not a nothing's going to change it, then you would start seeing a major impact in each one of our lives on how we live, on how we walk, on how, how we talk. And I know that a lot of times we, uh, at work, we may joke around and, and uh, pick at one another, uh, hopefully harmlessly, uh, never wanting to it to put on the helmet of salvation or our feet shodded with the preparation of the, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. It's the Word. That's what Jesus used whenever Satan tempted him time and time again. He would quote the Word. And he didn't let Satan twist the word like he did Satan did with Eve in the garden the serpent twisted the word and Eve found herself gullible and Adam participated when you know what the word says then you're not going to settle for anything less than what the word says uh, people say, well, the word is out of date. No, I don't care if it's 10,000 years from now. This Bible is still going to be just as 
valuable, infallible, and undeniable as it is right now. It is the truth. It is the living word of God. And we can take it to the bank that if we abide in it, then we won't ever fail. And that's why uh, having the helmet on and the word of God. You know, a lot of times I know that when I first turned to the Lord and I got in, I got to read a lot of scripture and everything. I remember a time one of our good friends when we was at our home church was having, just having a down day, you know, one of those days where you just, everything just seemed to just frustrate you and uh, you just agitated and aggravated. And uh, like any good old soldier, I would just quote the word and quote the word. And, and, and our friend knew the scripture. And finally just said, listen, I know what you're saying is true. But I'm just right now just wanting to have basically a pity party because I am tired. That can happen to the best of us. We all find ourselves sometimes struggling. And that's even the more reason that we get the complete armor of God on. Not leave nothing on. Not leave no open space. For the enemy to attack. And if you noticed all of the things that we just studied, there is nothing on the back side. You know why? Because God has made us more than conquerors. We are always to be going forward, not backwards. And I've and I know I've said this time. I feel like I, every time I take a step forward, I get knocked back two steps. Well, when we've got the complete armor of God, when the enemy tries to knock us back one step, we're going to go forward two steps. We're going to push into his, his territory. We're going to invade in his boundary and let him know that this belongs to God, belongs to Jesus. Until Jesus comes and sets up his millennial reign, he has endowed us, as we studied last night, with the ruling authority that we can put on the complete armor of God. And there isn't a devil or a demon that could can get to us when we do it God's way. Now that's why when Paul wrote Ephesians, it is a treasure chest of the completeness that God wants us to walk in. And so with that said, if the word of God isn't going in you, then you will be persuaded to fall for anything or everything and uh, and you know we will be attacked oh Satan's going to attack us but when we've got the complete armor of God on he don't know how to attack us he'll try and we'll be laughing we'll say is that all you got yeah uh, I remember as a young teenager and uh, I had bought a set of uh, boxing gloves and uh, I put them on my dad he knew how to box and everything and uh, and so he said how you want to do I said what do you mean he said well do you want to go from the belt just the chest or do you want to go the chest and head? I said, 
Yeah, anything above the belt, that'll be fine. And the way he stood, every time, it, it didn't matter which way I tried to punch him, he would lay it on me. <laughs> I mean, if I tried to come around with a, a, a right hook or a left jab, he would swap my hand down and jar me either into the chest or, or on the head. And the reason is because he had the knowledge of how to use the gloves, protect himself while getting <laughs> The opponent, and uh, and I never could. Uh, uh, when I was growing up, uh, get any good solid licks in. I mean, uh, he he never did try to you know beat me up black and blue, but he he tapped me hard enough to know that I I was going to get a beating. You know, if I ever got into a fight and I had to learn, I had to learn how to block. I had to learn how to uh, turn and be in the position that if somebody swung to deflect it and then take an open shot at them. That's the same way with putting on the armor of God. When Satan attacks, we're going to deflect those fiery darts and we're just going to knock him running you know as as Bible tells us submit to God resist the devil and he will flee well when you put on when you've humbled yourself to God and and submitted to him then you're putting the armor of God on when the enemy comes when Satan comes or one of his demons you're going to put them on the run they will leave faster than they came and hallelujah thank god for his word that helps us to learn how to use what we've been endowed with when we accepted jesus christ so we ought to get excited about that well, I'm going to close here, and uh, we will finish up next week, guaranteed, uh, unless the Lord comes back and or something doesn't, emergency doesn't come up. And uh, I hope that you go back over the whole book of Ephesians. Go back on my Facebook page or on YouTube and and pull up the God's plan for you and get it down in your heart. It's just, I mean, it's, you put St. John and Ephesians together. You could take both those books and live a victorious life with just those two books of the Bible. They give us that solid foundation. So, as always, if you've never accepted Jesus or if you've got lukewarm, it's time to get back on fire for God. You know, uh, uh, it's time for the church to rise up. Now, we've been boxed in and shut down and cold water dashed on us. It's time for us to reignite that Holy Spirit fire within us to go out and conquer what God has called us to. So, if you look for him or you've never accepted Jesus Christ right now, it's the greatest time to. So let's just pray this simple prayer, same one that I pray usually every time. 
Because if you'll confess it with your mouth and believe it in your heart, it'll be unto salvation, whatever you have need of. Father God, we come to you this today and ask, Lord, for you to forgive us of all of our sins, all of our faults, our failures, our iniquities. And Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Put a hunger and desire in us. Help us to learn to put the whole armor of God on so that we can stop the enemy in his tracks and live for you, Lord God, with the good news, Lord God, of what you've done for everyone. And so, Lord, I thank you for each one that's been with us. Uh, and, Lord, just bless them, keep them safe. And look forward to a great rest of the week. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope that, as always, we invite you to come join us at 11 o'clock uh, Sunday morning. I hope that you make it in person. And uh, love to have you uh, to be with us. There's nothing better than the come together as the body of Christ in worshiping our Lord and Savior. Uh, this weekend is going into uh, Labor Day weekend and uh, just hope and pray that everyone has a great week. I do want to make one note is that I found out today that a dear precious friend of ours that uh, we've been praying for uh, went to be with the Lord and uh, the funeral's going to be Saturday at 12 o'clock at Mount Airy at Spencer's Funeral Home. And uh, she requested that I help her pastor down there to uh, officiate her service. So uh, keep all of us in prayer over that. And uh, we hadn't got to see her in a, in a long time. I uh, had talked to her time or two uh, over the past few years and, of course, was able to keep up a little bit with her on Facebook. And uh, But she is a blessing. And uh, just know that right now that she's in heaven, uh, just uh, running up and down the streets of gold, uh, giving Jesus honor and glory. And remember her family also. So uh, I look forward to seeing you sa Sunday. And again, have a great rest of the week. And let God just lead you and guide you. And put that armor on and see, get that mind in control and see what God will do through you, for you, with you, and by you. God bless, and we'll see you then.